This is Greg Hansen's Video Notebook, brought to you by Domino's Pizza. I'm Star Sports Editor Ryan Finley, joined today by Greg Hansen. Greg, NBA Draft starts Thursday. We've talked about Aaron Gordon. We've talked about Nick Johnson. We've probably talked them both to death. <laughs> Let's talk about some of the fringe guys. And to me, when you talk about this draft, you know, Jordan Bachinski and Jahi Carson, two pretty good college players who are just fringe draft pick guys. I would have loved to have been there when the NBA people did their homework and talked to Herb Sendek about those two guys. I want to see what bill of goods he sold them mm -hmm. because he benefits from those guys getting drafted because this summer he can go in when recruiting starts and say, look at this, Arizona State got two guys drafted, mm -hmm. even if it's 54 and 59. Mm -hmm. An ASU coach hasn't been able to say that since 1981, basically. Well, and in a lot of ways, too, the success of James Harden at ASU allowed them to get Jahi Carson. Right? Didn't they say, hey, come here, you can take all the shots, score all the points, and we'll get you drafted? You have to sell your soul if you say you can take all the shots, and I think they did that. Yeah. And J Jahi Carson, Jahi, Jahi. Jahi. <laughs> had a good career, a nice career, but it wasn't a terrific career. Mm -hmm. you know, I don't project him as an NBA player. To me, what's so interesting, Greg, about both of these guys is that they're both going to only go as far as certain physical traits take them. Jahi Carson needs to go pro now because he has that extra gear, that blinding speed that goes away when you're in your mid-20s. Jordan Bachinski is seven feet tall. I mean, both of those guys have basically one thing that they do really well, and they're putting kind of all their eggs in that one basket. Would you agree? I do agree. Last week, Damon Stoudemire tweeted what makes a difference in the draft and in the NBA for sub-six-foot people, mm -hmm. and he said, a jumper. Uh-oh. Does Jahi Carson have a jumper? I don't think so. Not yet. No. He can get one, mm -hmm. but you usually don't develop one. Sure. And he's a guy who, I mean, I don't want to take away from what he did in college because he was, I think, a pretty special guy, a guy who probably could yeah. have started at Arizona or, or at any other team in the Pac-12. Oh, yeah. But you look at a guy of his size and stature and you try to compare him to somebody currently in the NBA, there aren't a whole lot of guys like him bouncing around. Isaiah Thomas from Washington. Mm -hmm. Averaged 20 points a game last year. Nobody knows about it because he played for Sacramento. Right. But he's got a jumper. He's got a jumper, and he had a jumper the day he set foot right. on campus. And it's a business of scoring. The NBA is about scoring. That's why I've always thought Aaron Gordon is going to knock him out with his energy mm -hmm. and his athleticism, but he, he can't score. Right. So I, that's why I think he's going to be a journeyman. Wow. This is Greg Hansen's Video Notebook brought to you by Domino's Pizza. Ryan Finley here with Greg Hansen. Greg, if the NBA is about scoring, Nick Johnson is a guy, when we talk about a jump shot, very much a work in progress in college, certainly played to his strengths uh, during his final year at the U of A. Is there a way he becomes successful at the next level? Yeah, but I think it will entail spending a couple of years in Greece and Italy and, and places like that. Mm -hmm. I think he would benefit from that. Mm -hmm. Maybe 100% of the people disagree, but mm -hmm. I think if he goes there and plays 40 minutes a game and gets the top Europeans for two or three years, then he can come back and have a seven or eight year NBA career. Would the key for him be playing point guard overseas and then coming back and that way now he is a defensive minded, oh, sure. ultra athletic point as opposed to a, a two? Everything changes if he's a point guard, everything. Wow, that's interesting. Greg, you know, obviously the draft coming up here in a couple of days. Uh, do you have any instincts, if you heard anything about where Aaron Gordon might go? Um, you know, the Utah Jazz is the, it's the last team I heard. You know, you keep hearing three to 10, three to 10. And somebody will take a chance on it because he is Mr. Energy. Mm -hmm. I mean, he can jump out of the gym, and, and he's a great teammate. So I, I think he'll go higher instead of lower, which means five instead of nine. Does he go ahead of or behind Joel Embiid? Man, Joel Embiid, how many? You don't get a body like that very often, and usually they draft the bodies, don't they? It's true, it's, but that's why Aaron Gordon might be a five. I know, yeah. Yeah, I know. Both he's are, fun to watch. They're both fun to watch, and I think that's what's going to make this NBA draft so interesting is, you know, there are a couple of very polished, sure things in the draft. And then there are guys like Gordon and Embiid who could be superstars. Right. You know, but you have such a small sample size from college. I'm, I'm always surprised there are misses in the NBA lottery mm -hmm. because you can evaluate a basketball player better than almost any other sport. Mm -hmm. And there are always misses. But why, why was Gilbert Arenas drafted 31st? Mm -hmm. How did they miss on that guy? Right. How'd, they miss, how'd Steve Kerr drop in the second round? Right. All right, Greg, we're going to stop here. Good stuff. As always, don't forget to join us next time when we talk about the NCAA, ongoing reform, and legal issues. Greg, did you bring your big, thick notebook? I carried it in in a wagon. Wonderful. For Greg Hansen, I'm Ryan Finley. This is Greg Hansen's Video Notebook brought to you by Domino's Pizza.
We'll see you next time. At Domino's, we're slowing down to make our handmade pan pizza the right way, taking our time to hand press the fresh dough into the pan, adding two layers of cheese, and slowing our ovens down to get the crust golden and crispy. So try a Domino's handmade pan pizza with two toppings for just $7.99.